Hi, my name's Louise Thwait and um, today we're starting our Unit 4 for 12 General Maths um, and today we're looking at reviewing recurrence relations and applying that to simple and compound interest scenarios. Um, so you'll see that I've uh, attached just a little copy of the um, syllabus point that we're ticking off here and the lesson objectives we're hoping to cover uh, include reviewing um, what we did back in Unit 3 with uh, arithmetic and geometric recursion, applying that to new finance um, terminology, and then being able to use recurrence relations. The second half will look at writing simple and compound interest recursions. Um, we also have to look at converting nominal to compounding interest rates and finally see if we can use those recurrence models um, in a loan or investment scenario. Okay, so the first thing we need to review is what do we do back in Unit 3 when we looked at arithmetic and geometric sequences? Um, so everyone should be familiar by now with the recurrence relations. Um, we got used to Tn plus 1 being the next consecutive term and Tn was the um, previous or current term that you're using. Um, the difference between arithmetic and geometric. Um, with arithmetic we had a common difference that was added on to each consecutive term, um, whereas GPs looked at a multiple um, of a common ratio between one term to the next term. Okay, um, we need to modify these arithmetic and geometric sequences a little bit because in finance, um, particularly in our unit four, um, we use the letter A to represent each term um, in terms of a balance and amount. Uh, so we change our T or terms to A to the N plus 1 and A to the N. Um, and just note that when we we're using um, arithmetic and geometric sequences, we started off with an initial term, which we called T1. Um, and in finance, we know this as the A0. Um, So what does this mean for um, the changeover into finance uh, APs and GPs? Well, um, we simply just replace the T with a capital A N plus 1 for the next consecutive term. Um, a N is our current balance. And then as you can see in um, an arithmetic, we use a plus D for the common difference and an R times um, the current term for a geometric. So these are used um, in simple and compound interest situations. Um, the arithmetic sequence or AP can be applied to simple interest scenarios and the GP or um, geometric sequence can be applied to compound interest scenarios. However, um, we like to complicate it a little bit and essentially for some situations down the track um, we need to combine arithmetic and geometric sequences. Um, so for things that we look at, for example, reducing balance loans down the track. Um, so if I was combining um, a geometric and arithmetic sequence, it would look something like um, the A n plus 1 equals r times a to the n plus d. Okay, so we're going to progress towards trying to use some recurrence relations. So we're going to start off really easy and um, in example 1 here we've got three given recursion relations. You should be able to see that a 
um, has that arithmetic form, B has the geometric form, and C has um, like the combined form um, where you can see, for example, that the R or common ratio is 0 0.3 and the common difference is plus 7. See if you can have a go at um, writing down the first five terms of each of those sequences. Um, after you finish doing that, then move on to example question number two. Uh, another simple familiar scenario, a um, bit of a worded description. From the words, can you put together um, a recursion sequence to describe what you're reading there? And once you've done that, can you find the next two consecutive terms? Um, for those that need a bit of a starter, um, if we look at example 1a, our starting term or initial term is 9. Our defined arithmetic recursion relation is a to the n plus 1 equals a to the n take 4. So that just means to get my next consecutive number in my sequence, I'll take the previous number and take 4. Now because um, we're starting off with uh, a 0, our initial term, to get to our next term, which will be a um, a1, um, we'll simply take a0, which is 9, and minus 4, and we end up with 5. So the next consecutive term is 5, and so on. Okay, so because it's asking for the first five terms of the sequence, that means it also includes A0 as your initial, and we progress to 9, 5, 1, negative 3, and negative 7. Okay, so um, have a go at 1, B, and C, and give question 2 a go as well. And I'll check in. All right, let's see how you went. Uh, so for 1b, uh, we were using a geometric sequence. So hopefully you ended up with um, negative 8, negative 32, negative 128, and negative 512. Um, for c, we had a combination of an arithmetic and a geometric. So starting off with our initial value of 3, the next term 7.9, and rounded those values at the end there. Uh, for question two, um, it says we have a starting value of three, and then um, it gives a rule saying triple and then add six. So that kind of implies it's one of those mixed arithmetic and geometric se recursion sequences. So we kind of are trying to recall that we need to put it in the R times A to the N plus D form to get the next consecutive term. So given that our starting value is three, um, to come up with our recursion formula, we'd have a n plus 1 equals 3, which is our r value, because that's the triple part, um, times a to the n, and then add 6 as our arithmetic part. So then if I apply that, I'll get um, the next two consecutive terms being 15 and 51.